So it's easy to take in money when things is going well. It's harder to get assets when things are going bad. And this year, you couldn't dream up a worse scenario. So we kind of consider this to be a really good sign for long-term growth. This is Trillion's ETF MasterChef, where we interview the chefs of the finance world on their hottest investment recipes. Welcome to Trillions. I'm Joel Weber. And I'm Eric Balchunas. And I'm Scarlett Fu. And this is a special episode of Trillions because I get to join you guys. And we're going to talk a little bit about what's been going on in the world of the ETFs. You've got inflation. You've got concerns about a recession. You've got rising interest rates. It doesn't paint a pretty picture for a lot of different asset classes. What does this mean for the ETF world? So we have a phrase that we use in our team. Bull markets are good for ETFs, but bear markets are great. Why? Uh, the reason is because when it gets really bad out there, ETFs tend to see more volume. People lean on them and they, they get new fans. And so what happens is volume tends to predict future flows. And in the first half, ETFs traded $30 trillion worth of shares, which shatters their semi-annual record. It shows people trust them, use them, go in and out of them, and that's what you want to see. But you take a step back and sentiment has really soured, confidence is breaking down, and you see big tech is no longer the winner. It's been the winner for so long that you kind of have to scratch your head and wonder what's taken its place. Uh, almost nothing. <laughs> no, we looked, uh, basically only about 9% of the 2,900 ETFs were positive in the first half. That is really low. That tells you everything's down. Stocks had their worst semi-annual period in I think 50 years. Bonds worst ever. ETF still managed to take in $291 billion, which I think it was their greatest feat. Given that, the market was down 20%. And who are some of the standouts that are taking in money in terms of sectors? Yeah, I mean, the big one is energy, natural resources ETFs, which is now the biggest thematic category uh, bouncing off innovation. That was the big thing from the last 10 years. Uh, and then you have treasuries. Another category that's interesting is high dividend ETFs. What's happening there? Every now and then a category gets into like the sweet spot where the stars align. This one is in the sweet spot because people want income, but they're a little afraid to go in the bond market because that's right where the Fed is raising rates. So high dividend ETFs give you these nice yields because they go after the highest yielding stocks. And so that's what creates sort of a feeding frenzy. We've seen almost 30 years of ETFs at this point, and yet it's rare that you see uh, an entirely new cuisine come out of nowhere. And yet we did see that this year as well. We did. So a whole new category is born with single stock ETFs. Basically an ETF that gives you inverse or leverage exposure to a stock. For example, the one that has come out and gotten the most traction is inverse Tesla. So if you buy it, you click buy and you are now short Tesla. There's it's another way of shorting the stock. Yeah, it's hard to short a stock. You might need a margin account. A lot of retail investors don't want to deal with that. So I get it. It makes something that was a little bit of a pain easier. And that's how ETFs have grown this whole time. Their convenience is a, big, is a big deal. There's even been some chatter that we're going to see an inverse Jim Cramer ETF, which I think would be the closest thing to a sure hit after a spot Bitcoin ETF. So I think, look, ETFs are a big tent. You've got vanilla, Vanguard, safe for grandma. And then you've got some exotic stuff in this one wing over here. And that's OK, in my opinion. And uh, you know we have a traffic light system to help investors. But certainly, the SEC is letting a lot of stuff out there. Sounds like ETF issuers are basically jumping on the bandwagon. They're seeing what the meme stock guys are chasing and saying, we have a product for them. Which Eric likes to call power tools, right? And those power tools can be really deadly if you don't know what you're using them for, right? Or how to use them. Yeah, we found that a lot of people, what they traditionally do, they probably have a boring vanilla core that might have index funds, a 401k. And they take a little bit of money and they go wild. And that can mean you know buying theme ETFs, using options, using these leverage ETFs. Um, and some could argue that's actually a behavioral hack because if it occupies your idle hands and distracts you enough that you don't touch the boring part, which needs to grow to really capture the beauty of compounding, then it's doing a service. Of course, this is all fascinating. You can listen more on our podcast, Trillions. Eric, Scarlett, thanks so much for joining us.